Welcome back to another episode of An Perspective where I, Tony from Anar Gallery, sit down with friends all over the world to talk and to learn new perspectives around Indonesian textile art. Today, I'll be talking to Hafiz Drahman, who is a graphic designer turned textile designer, and we'll be talking more about his design principles and how he turned it into a textile design. And do grab your drinks of choice, sit back, relax, and enjoy Hafiz. And perspective. Okay. Welcome, Hafiz, to today's episode of An Perspective. How are you doing there in Kelantan? Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing great here. It's just that uh, it's MCO, so yeah, we need to. I just need to um, survive during this MCO. Yeah. Is it recently extended again? Um, in Kelantan, we are currently um, going towards phase two. So maybe after this, uh, they will uh, lift up the MCO. But I think in Kuala Lumpur, like in Selangor, uh, it's still under um, uh, strengthened uh, MCO. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, not to worry. Let's talk about something fun. So, okay. uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, got to know Hafiz uh, through our, our previous guest, uh, which is Shahida. She recommended uh, Hafiz and Yeah, I'm taking a, a look at your portfolios and I'm super interested in your uh, Sarawak batik motif. And yeah, we'll be talking more uh, about that. But first of all, uh, maybe you'll be able to share a little bit about yourself, your journey and uh, leading up to uh, developing uh, this batik. Okay, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me uh, to to to, uh, to share my experience uh, with your audience okay so uh, hi everyone my name is Hafiz Brahman uh, i'm based in uh, currently based in Kelantan i'm from Kuala Lumpur actually um so i'm 35 years old uh, so i graduated from UiTM uh, which uh, my diploma and my degree was in graphic design So, um, but later on, um, when I did my master, I changed uh, into another um, uh, majoring, which is uh, design technology, which focused on batik. So, um, I have always been fascinated by uh, batik, uh, batik Malaysia or batik Indonesia and, and all of, from all over the world. When did you first uh, get in touch with uh, Batik? Like, what's your earliest memories of Batik? Mm, okay. Um, honestly, I think um, uh, it started when uh, when I was small. Yeah, when I was small, I, I can't remember at what age, but uh, I I I have this picture of me uh, li- lying on a uh, on a uh, on a beautiful batik pillow so basically my my parents uh, already uh, applied that in not intentionally it is may, because they are not designers as well maybe they really love the, the those those kind of uh, products you know so i think from there uh, you know by by since i was small by looking at the 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 the, the pillow itself so um, that makes me you know start to uh, appreciate more about batik yeah especially by looking at the the, the old pictures uh, during the, during my um, younger years but i think uh, uh, one of it is uh, uh, one of them that that uh, you know um, inspired me to to go towards this batik uh, industry is my uncle yeah um, she's a He's a batik artist himself, but unfortunately, he passed away a few years back. Yeah, it started when I was small, you know. Uh, I really love arts. So during primary school, uh, we have this uh, small batik kit, you know. Mm-hmm. So from, from there, it started to uh, pretty much, um, uh, it, it's a basic introduction on, on batik. So, yeah. yeah. But professionally, I think... Uh, when I did my um, degree, yeah, that was about 2006, 2007, something like that. 
uh, because uh, during the elective class, we start to use chanting, we start to explore on the batik process. So I did uh, small projects for my mom. <laughs> I do some scarf, you know, basically for just for my mom, you know, because at that time I don't have confidence to to sell the batik. Yeah, because some. Um, you need to practice and produce a uh, beautiful motif. Because I, I'm not very good in chanting. Uh, it's quite tough, you know. Cause, uh, by looking at uh, uh, those those people who are uh, producing chanting uh, uh, fabrics. Uh, example, in, in Indonesia, you know, you, you can just hold the fabric and chanting it, you know, slowly like that. So, I, I do have that... Uh, uh, passion the to patience. Yeah, yeah, the patience to 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 uh, chanting it slowly. Yeah, I prefer the block, you know. The, the, why I I change my majoring from graphic to textile is because of uh my passion and love on on batik. I really love the patterns uh that that uh you can see on batik. Yeah, it's quite similar to graphic design. It's just that in graphic design we normally do uh. Like myself, I'm um, more into uh, doing corporate design. So designing logo is one uh, one of the um, uh, one of the uh, process that uh, I've been doing since diploma. So for me, when I look into motif, it's like logo. Yeah, it's a stylized elements of uh, art and and principle of design. So from there. Um, uh, I started to explore more on batik, whereby in uh, when I did my degree, uh, there is an elective uh, subject. So I, so the the um the the ask the student whether you you uh the which which uh, elective would you like to continue. So there is batik uh, elective. So right away I just you know uh, choose that as my elective. So from from there I started to build up more um, uh, passion in it and, 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 and explore more about batik. Uh, and then uh, later on, I, when I did my master's, so I, I move on into uh, research uh, on, on batik design. And then um, right after I did my master, uh, I start to uh, uh, produce uh, a little bit uh, of batik uh, uh, fabrics. Uh, which is using uh, batik block technique. So in in, in Malaysia, uh, we have several techniques, yeah, uh, like chanting, uh, six screen, and, and batik block. So um, within the three techniques, I noticed that um, the batik block uh, really uh, inspired me to to uh, to, uh, to to continue my endeavor in in this uh, textile uh, industry. So from there, I um, start to explore more about it. So I went to Kelantan, I went to Terengganu, you know, just to look at the um, traditional way of, of using batik blocks. So uh, so from there, I, I do a lot of experimentation uh, on developing my own tools. Decided to um, explore on using alternative material doing you know uh, cardboard um, pieces of driftwood anything mm -hmm. that is uh, have the potential of of uh, 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 producing some textures uh, uh, using the wax so uh, we just experiment mm -hmm. and how's the experiment going um uh it's it's uh, uh it's good i mean um of course if we compare it with the traditional uh, materials copper block it's more sturdy uh mm -hmm. the challenges of doing uh using uh, recycled materials is uh it cannot uh produce uh, the exact uh, uh quality lines that you use metal mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, but that's not the problem for me it's not a problem because i i'm i i love to have some abstract texture yeah on mm -hmm. on uh my batik uh fabrics uh example i even uh use um the peanut uh 
kulit kacang uh, or peanut <laughs> really? the, the shell yeah so oh. I, I use that but uh, uh, eventually after like uh, a few times of, of uh, dipping in the wax it start to uh, brittle you know because it's natural material yeah it's yeah. not metal but it's okay <laughs> I eat more peanut and I do, <laughs> to, uh, I I just repair it with a new uh, new uh, peanut rice. Ah, yeah. uh, awesome! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so for me, it's fun. Yeah, for for others, it's like, oh, it's um, you know, uh, it's better to use metal than you know. But yeah, for me, uh, that's what I did in my master uh, 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 studies, and from. There on, I I continue doing doing uh, the batik block uh, uh, process. So you so, learn how to make the block yourself, the copper yeah. block. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I I know the step of the process, but um, it's quite tedious. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I rather uh, I will just ask my friend to do it for me. Yeah. How many uh, uh stamp makers are there now in okay. uh, Kelantan? Okay. For for the uh, uh, stamp makers, I think at the moment um, we have less than ten, less than ten, oh. uh, less than ten. Uh, compared to uh, previous years, maybe in nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, yeah, maybe we could reach. Uh, less than uh, ten is about which years? Are they young? Okay. Are they old? Okay, okay. If it, if uh, around that. I ten uh, batik uh, make uh, batik stem makers. I think um, the young one maybe we have like two or three of 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 the young one. The rest is uh, uh, veteran uh, batik stem makers. Yeah, and and within that numbers, uh, if we look at the young uh, uh, batik stem makers, only one or two. Maybe one, maybe one is uh, uh, produce a good quality, uh, which uh, align with uh, Indonesia uh, uh, quality. You know, in terms of uh, even the even uh, surface of 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 the batik uh, block uh, uh, and 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 um, st- the the sturdiness of of the of the block itself. Yeah. Because not not everyone have the patience to you know do intricate uh, metal uh, uh, to uh, be doing the block itself. It's very hard. It's very hard. Yeah. Why batik Sarawak? Because my father is from Sarawak, so I'm actually like half Sarawakian. My mom is from Johor, and now. Uh, when you when I I start to you know develop more about the techniques and, and, and so forth, um, and and one of my lecturers uh, asked me, um, so what's your uniqueness? You know, uh, what do you want to share with the audience uh, in the in batik design? Because um, currently we have a lot of batik designers in Malaysia. Yeah, so in order to uh, move forward and and stand up from from the others. So I did a little bit of research, um, and uh, I I have one uh, local designer, which is she's from Sarawak uh, herself, which is Datuk Tuan Mabang Sophie. So from there, I I look at uh, I really love her design, you know. I I even uh, bought some of uh, her batik. So from from there on, I I decided to why not I incorporate uh, Sarawakian heritage in my design. Because I really want to uh, uh, share um, uh, my heritage with others, you know. Um, my my kampung is in uh, in Miri in in Nia, yeah. So in Nia we have a lot of um, beautiful uh, jungles and forests and so forth. So from from there uh, I started to uh, look at uh, the traditional artifacts like like uh, on the on the kain puakumbu. Yeah, or anything that related to Sarawakian heritage. Uh, my philosophy of design or my process of designing the motif, uh, I I do not copy um, or hundred uh, percent copy copying back the the traditional motif 
because uh, as as a designer, we need to respect uh, the traditional motif. Yeah, and uh, so I do a lot of uh, stylization uh, of of new motif. Yeah, designing new motif, uh, but it's still still uh, inspired by Sarawakian heritage. So it is more contemporary compared uh, compared to traditional uh, look and style. So yeah, so till today, uh, I'm still um, actively uh, participating in the local batik industry. But since uh, working with the university, uh, you know, I have to divide my time uh, with uh, um, lecturing, you know. Any free time that I have, then, then I'll start to experiment uh, with the colors, the techniques. I think it's also like your perspective from an artist and designer, which is like more uh, open-mindedness to experiment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, yeah. in experiment, you have to be open-minded. If you if you're not open-minded, then you will be stressed. Yeah, and and you because experimentation experiment uh, it's it's important for us to to learn. Uh, okay. and 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 uh, the 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 objective is to learn and uh, discover. Uh, uh, the, the the effects of the using a raw uh, alternative materials. Yeah, it, if you if you are not open minded, then it's okay. Just just use the metal. Yeah, you do not need to you know uh, uh, be sad if it's not working or uh, using alternative alternative material. Yeah, yeah. And talking about uh, designing uh, to, of your uh, batik Sarawak motif. First of all, is there a batik wax resist culture in Sarawak? Uh, yeah, we do have uh, batik uh, wax resist culture in Sarawak. But uh, compared to Kelantan and Terengganu, uh, it's quite new uh, in Sarawak. Yeah? Uh, in Sarawak, mainly, uh, yeah, I think the most famous uh, fabric is uh, those weaving kind of textile. Yeah, like Puat Kumbu, Songket, Songket Sarawak we have in, in, in Sarawak. So Batik, it's, uh, it's quite new in Sarawak. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It started with chanting and then they started to explore with Batik blocks and uh, and of course the, the, uh, the six screen uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and the, the uh, it's, it's quite hard uh, uh, to produce Batik in Sarawak because all of the materials uh, uh, including Malaysia, eh? uh, it's imported from China. So I think uh, most of it, uh, they will uh, uh, send it to Kelantan and Terengganu, or Kuala Lumpur. Then later on, they will export it to Sarawak. So the, the, the cost of delivering uh, all this material itself is very expensive. So not many um, batik makers are willing to uh, do uh, those batik in 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 Sarawak. Yeah, we have several uh, workshops and, uh, and in in Sarawak, but yeah, mainly in 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 uh, Kelantan and Terengganu and Kuala Lumpur. So I would uh, say that the motif exploration is also pretty new as well, and it's could I say like it's kind of like a reflections or like inspired by the woven cloth themselves yeah yeah correct i agree with that most of the motif is derived from the artifacts or those uh, uh products they produce uh in their uh, lifestyle yeah like like you mentioned mm -hmm. now pakumbu uh, the ceramics yeah uh the 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 colorful beads uh and and uh yeah all, all pretty much uh inspired by those items, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and and uh, there is some of them like like for example Datuk Toma Bang Sofi, uh, she still inspired from those uh, products, but uh, she tried to make it uh, more contemporary, yeah, by applying uh, different sets of colors, yeah, uh, not not so traditional colors, very bright and vibrant colors, and. Um, and the motif itself is stylized uh, 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 according to her philosophy. Yeah, it's not like uh, hundred percent um, 
uh, derived from the product. Yeah. Normally, they will do some stylization uh, to make it to make it more contemporary. Yeah. Uh, how about you yourself? How do you approach your design? If you can take us off that uh, creative journey from research to uh, doing your design. Okay, we uh, we start from from the research part, yeah. Okay. Yes. So oh. I think we need we need more than five hours. Is it okay? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so, all right, from the research itself. So, um, of course, uh, being a, 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 a an art student. So we ha- we need to follow some of the uh, the steps that that uh, we learn from the art college. So, uh, so being a graphic designer, for, first of all, uh, for me, um, I will start on uh, um, uh, thinking on what are the final products that I want to produce. Yeah, I, w- I will I will look at the final product first. Okay. So from there, let's say, uh, okay, I think this year uh, I want to launch a new menswear collection, All right? So from there, um, I will uh, do some visual reference, you know? Visual reference, of course, first of all, it's uh, to find out what motif uh, that I can uh, design and apply on my batik uh, design. So those visual reference or motif could uh, derived from uh, books, yeah, from gallery um, visit, uh, uh, and that that uh, I've done for the past few years. Uh, pretty much uh, looking back from my treasure trunk of ideas, yeah. Uh, I I love to take photos, so mm-hmm. I will look at the photos first, and then from there we will go into other. Uh, source of uh, inspiration like uh, maybe uh, uh, by looking uh, from other designers uh, point of view yeah maybe maybe they are not doing batik but but the motif itself you know uh, the motif that they use in their textile or fashion design uh, could also uh, attract my attention or, or be part of my inspiration yeah and then, first of all, of course, the visual reference, yeah, in the research part. Uh, and then, uh, I, once I think I have enough uh, or, or uh, uh, good source of references, yeah, I, I will choose. Uh, from that, I will I will look at the lines, the colors, the the the, the arrangement of the motif, yeah, uh, which is suitable for the menswear collection. Uh, and then I will start to do the drawing. Yeah, uh, I normally I will do uh, uh, like several sketches of uh, the motif just just using pen and paper. I'm mean, very traditional. <laughs> uh, some of my friends uh, using iPad. Yeah, I, I I'm looking forward to to use uh, more technology in my process. So. Uh, I do a lot of drawings. Just use my pen and papers. You know, I will I will keep on developing or stylize the motif until I feel that oh this I think this this has a a, a, a good potential to be a motif. Yeah, it's it's similar like designing a logo. Yeah, um, so I will I will uh, do a lot of uh, sketches. And and the subject matter itself, let's say, um, if I inspired from a flower, so I will try not to copy exactly, uh, uh, or, or the elements or or the shape of the flowers. No, so I I will start to stylize it a little bit. Just just what I did in my logo design. Yeah, just to make it um, more interesting. Yeah, you can you can you can use the exact mo- uh, the exact shapes, but it's going to be a um, very uh, boring kind of look. Yeah, you need to be different from others. So after the uh, process of sketching, um, so I will apply, uh, I will put, I will uh, download, uh, no, I will scan everything and put it in uh, my laptop. Okay, so from there, uh, it, is, it is much more faster uh, compared uh, using the tradition, traditional way of uh, 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 doing the layout uh, manually using pencils and so 
So in the uh, laptop, I normally I use AI Adobe Adobe Illustrator uh, to fasten the, the the process of uh, designing. Yeah. So again, uh, once I already have the uh, the shape of the motif, the colors, and so, so uh, we just experiment it in in the AI. Yeah. Until um, uh, you have. Uh, I think I have achieved uh, the the uh, uh, the design that I desire. Yeah, uh, something something that is that has a market uh, value. Yeah, because in designing motif, it you can do a lot of style, but at the end, will your customer or your your client love the design? Yeah, you you can go beyond. Uh, your creativity or your imagination, but at the end, you need to sell the product. You know? So that is why uh, there's a lot of uh, visual reference on other designers. Nice. You have laid out uh, the customer's journey, uh, the designer's journey, uh, which is a lot of it is uh, customer focus coming from uh, the customers. Uh, what would they might like and how you uh, sell them and then uh, what's the product's gonna be? So uh, it comes from uh, uh, there as a starting point. Uh, how about uh, incorporating a philosophy of uh, the traditional motif? How do you uh, input that into the design, if any? All right. So um, in, 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 to answer to that question, uh, I think that will be in the process of designing the motif. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, normally, the, in 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 the fashion part, uh, I, I I like to do uh, just a, something that is saleable, you know, uh, not not very couture, not 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 very heavy for 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 our local to 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 purchase it. Okay, all right. So uh, when I do uh, uh, the design, yeah, uh, especially designing the motif, uh, so from from uh from what I've learned from my experience and, and so forth. So I have uh, I have uh, started to have uh, some philosophies or, or something I would say uh, my own DNA in, in, in batik design. So uh, every time I, I, I launch a new batik, so they will know, oh, that is Hafiz Draman uh, batik. Okay. So some of the key elements that I apply back to my design First of all, is of course the Sarawak look or the the, the motif of inspired by Sarawak. Okay. And uh, it's easy when you look at the the, the, the motif of Sarawak. Um, uh, the, the 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 style of of course the traditional style would, would look uh, let's say. Inspired from the ceramics, yeah, uh, maybe like example, uh, orang uh, orang ulu motif, yeah, which has um, well, wavy lines and so forth. So, um, in in my design, I maybe I don't have much on uh, the wave lines, yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, I, I do a lot of stylization, yeah. The 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 the, the wave line, maybe I will change it uh, into uh, uh, or stylize it using bold lines because I love to use bold lines in my, in my design. So that's one of my DNA in, in designing batik motif. So uh, from there, uh, besides using bold lines, uh, I love to uh, use vibrant colors in my design yeah because uh, uh, it's just my preference in designing batik uh, uh, design so uh, well we can apply a lot of uh, other colors but uh, again my DNA in, in designing batik motif uh, is having a, uh, a vibrant and a contrast kind of uh, uh, color scheme okay uh, and then uh, some of the philosophies or, or, or 
or things that I apply. Um, I'll say uh, something uh, about the story behind the motif. Okay, uh, meaning uh, as example, when I did my 2008-2017 collection, which is, is which is uh, uh, it's for a batik competition in Malaysia. Uh, it's for Pialis Re and Don. Um, that motif was inspired by uh, a traditional kuih in Sarawak. It's called kuih lempuk durian. Uh, so uh, from from that uh, packaging uh, of that kuih, you know, the shape of the packaging has inspired me to create a motif uh, for that uh, collection. So from the packaging design, I turn it into motif. So that kind of, uh, that's uh, what I meant by uh, there's a story yeah, behind the subject matter. It's not just typical kind of motif that you obtain from uh, forest or from the jungle, you know, from any kind of plants. So uh, in, in my process, it must be, Start, it must start from something that you uh, have history or, or something that you love. Mm -hmm. Then, it, then the design will have will have a, uh, then the process of design, designing is, uh, uh, is 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 going to be smooth uh, mm -hmm. because you love the subject matter. You have some history about the subject matter, so it's easier for you to understand. Uh, about the subject matter and the process of designing it. It's hard when uh, you don't love the subject matter and you try to push um, yourself designing that something that you you are not keen to do and you are not love to do. So that's what I learned from the previous project. You know, you must love your subject matter. Uh, even uh, from from my experience, if if you cry uh, thinking about that subject matter, you better use that uh, as your design, uh, because that's uh, where your 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 we transfer your soul into your design. That's what I I I have been practice uh, uh, doing my my uh, batik uh, design my batik motif. So every batik motif that I design, uh, there is a story. Yeah, so it's not just about you know traditional look but also like adding uh, to use that as a visual reference and then you add in your personal design yeah. personal touch uh, and with your personal memories as well which right. i thought is very interesting and what are some of the challenges that you face uh, while uh, running thread new or are doing your design, sir. Okay, so there is a lot of challenge, you know, uh, in in doing this traditional uh, industry, especially batik. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, I think the con try to be consistent and, and relevant in the industry is very very challenging. Yeah. Uh, especially during this pandemic uh, situation. Because uh, as a designer, we look at pretty much um, uh, all all sorts of activities, you know, in this world. So during this pandemic, it affect our emotion. If you look at my design currently, it's very sad in terms of colors, in terms of shapes, you know. Sometimes it looks like tombstone, you know. It reminds me a lot of those people. Uh, who who are uh, uh, affected and also uh, 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 pass away due to COVID, yeah, because it really affects my emotion. But uh, at the same time, you no, know, I, I try to um, uh, focus more on 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 the good things, you know, my, especially my family, yeah, and uh, and then I would say um, uh, to obtain. Uh, those raw materials, yeah, 
uh, during this, during this pandemic uh, situation, it's very hard to get all those material. Even if you, you even you you even even though there is a few shops still selling it, the price itself is very expensive. So I cannot I cannot uh, you know uh, buy all those material at the moment. Maybe some of it I need to use other alternative material. Yeah, but in terms of colors, fabrics, nothing much you can do. Uh, uh, I, I, I would definitely need to buy those things because that's the main item in doing batik. And then to attract the young generation to use batik uh, in their lifestyle, uh, it's quite tough. Yeah, uh, because of the because of the cost of producing batik itself for for SME, uh, it, uh, it's very high. So we cannot sell it uh, at lower price at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so to attract that, uh, there is a way to attract them, but we need to uh, we need to be united. Yeah. Uh, all, all those batik designers, local batik designers need, need to be unite and, and, and from there we can move forward uh, easily. Yeah. So that's I think some of the challenges that uh, uh, that I have um, uh, experienced uh, uh, during this situation. Uh, yeah, just, just to sustain and, and to sustain this traditional uh, process or industries need a lot of support uh, from the community and of course money <laughs> the uh, the money is, is is important you know for us to 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 buy the materials yeah passion is passion just just passion and and loving the the body itself uh, uh, it's not enough yeah, we need we need to, of course, uh, uh, have a small capital, you know, to 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 to, to continue the project. I'm lucky because uh, I'm attached to uh, one of the local university, so the extra money that I have, uh, I can use it to create a small uh, or support uh, other uh, batik stem makers, you know, just just to to make sure this legacy keep on uh, evolving yeah and new innovation and so forth applying whatever that uh, what, applying those research that I, uh, uh, that I have um, uh, done for the past few years share with them especially uh, on, on designing the motif you know the colors and so forth you mentioned earlier about during this period there are more people buying uh the printed materials as versus to the traditional batik. Uh, is there any chance or uh, to kind of like sway them to uh, buy the traditional technique? Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. During during this uh uh this pandemic situation, a lot of um uh, people uh. A lot of people are trying to uh, save most of their money by by buying essential items. Yeah. So uh, at the moment, for our local industry, uh, the 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 cost of producing batik is very high. Yeah. You know? uh, we try to, to we 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 try to make it. Um, uh, affordable for everyone yeah and i think each of my friends in the industry is is uh is is uh producing something which is saleable uh cheaper you know not 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 uh, even the process itself is uh not to uh uh the the process is not that that uh, uh doesn't use a lot of wax yeah so because we need to uh uh, uh you, we need to use a little amount of um because the cost is very expensive yeah we if we, we if we use a lot of 
uh, uh, raw materials, then the price will go up. Yeah, the cost of uh, cost of producing it will go up. So yeah, we do uh, produce something uh, saleable. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we we also uh, introduce to them all those uh, item. But then, I think most of them. Um, it's not it's not a priority to to you know to buy because uh during this situation uh every ringgit is very precious and and um they opt for something cheaper still nice to 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 wear during this situation but something which is not not too expensive yeah most most of them uh the budget for that they, they allocate yeah for for buying bhakti it's 50 ringgit and below not more than that not more than that there there is some of our clients who spend more than 100 but not many will uh buy something more than 100 because at this situation 100 ringgit is it's it's uh it's quite a lot yeah to to it can sustain, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, it can last for maybe one week of, of mm -hmm. growth, maybe two weeks. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, we, we also promote those those items. But there is a few we will we'll buy, uh, but, but most of them will opt for the digital printed. Yeah, um, yeah. Cheaper, yeah. It's cheaper. Yeah, I definitely understand uh, in terms of like the situation and priorities that uh where where people will like uh spend their money so yeah it's totally understandable and another thing that um there is not much event going on so everyone is staying at home exactly so yes. they just wear whatever that they have um they do not need to you know there's no reason to to do ootd <laughs> uh, and, and, Better really just, like anything yeah, like seen on the camera yeah so it's better to to be safe at home yeah there is a few will will do ootd at home but you know not not many uh will will uh have the chance to you know to do that everyone is you know affected especially mm -hmm. the motion and so yes uh and I don't know, what are some of the projects or things that you are currently doing on? Uh, ah, okay. This is... Uh, uh, what's upcoming the, from Hafiz? That I've been, uh, well, I, I've been waiting for you to ask. Okay, currently, um, I, we, uh, me and my friends uh, are going to launch our new Batik collection. Ooh, so, nice. Uh, because it uh, it's, it's supposed to be a, a annual kind of event yeah so last year we don't have any last year we have fashion week but nobody watch the fashion mm -hmm. week. yeah because everybody is uh, concerned about their safety their health so this year we uh, uh, one of the local uh, batik organization approaches to uh, come up with a new collection which is uh, uh, has the uh, uh, which is something like I said something that is uh, unique saleable and, and affordable for everyone so we are currently producing uh, prototypes for the photo shoot and uh, maybe according to them they will launch the video of the show um, uh, the digital show somewhere in September. Okay, mm. uh, I can show some of the fabrics if you want. Yes, it's not supposed to share, but it's okay. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> just for you. Okay. okay, so this is one of it. Ah, like that. Okay, I can see okay. a little bit. Yes, so uh. it's a, a vertical, vertical motif. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said just now, so uh, the, uh, for my collection, um, so I cannot use very intricate kind of motif 
the the the, the motif that you saw just now um uh, i use um uh, recycle woods you know uh uh, uh, a dri- uh not driftwood i think i i i i got it from uh a local carpenter because uh-huh. uh, he's uh on the process of clearing clearing up his uh uh hardware store so i just use that uh and 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 apply it to my uh batik process because i i still have some of the um color powders and so forth so uh, uh, in the collection um it's going to look very very modern and contemporary it's like um you know like something to something for us to celebrate uh as a as a human being you know we need to stay together so the collection is more like uplift uplifting your your spirits mm-hmm. the colors i'm going to uh, the colors that i use something is of course my my dna is uh design in in batik design something is vibrant you know mm-hmm. it, uh, don't worry, don't worry too much about the covid so just <laughs> wait and celebrate so something like that you know mm-hmm. so, so some of my friends are, are designing new things as well so mm-hmm. tune for that uh launch uh, which is uh scheduled on september yeah uh-huh nice we'll be looking forward to that sure i'll i'll, I'll share the the video and the content very soon all right thanks and you mentioned you do teach as a lecturer yeah. as well right so that keeps you busy correct correct yeah okay. so uh, are you pursuing uh A PhD? Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Pursuing PhD, uh, and then uh, teaching the in, in in classes and doing my body. So uh, I'm a very busy man. So a mm. lot of uh, and and since MCO, I I started to explore on planting. Uh. Uh, uh, and I I focus on cladiums. Uh huh. Because for me the caladiums looks like batik. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, the 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 motif or the design on the on the on the leaf, uh, it's like uh it's like batik uh painting. Mm-hmm. So I do a lot of um planting as well. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I'm currently pursuing my PhD uh in and on doing research on the batik block. Oh, uh, okay. It's progressing well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Quite tough at the moment, yeah. To 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 get uh to to interview some of them, mm-hmm. um, uh some of them are very uh busy with their activities, you know. So I need to find uh uh, uh, uh the right time, you know, to to meet all these yeah. people to get to get all the data. And um, also yeah. you're uh, researching on the technology of uh, batik stamps. Correct. Batik correct. Blocks. Yeah. Well, currently we are facing problems on on the declining of uh, uh, buyers on 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 buying our but local batik. So I need to uh, to find out the the what's the reason. You know, uh, uh, is it because of the design? So it's more on um, exploring or find or research on the the quality of our local batik. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be and then we need to to. Uh, to, uh, we need to share it to the um, batik industry so that they can uh, implement or come up with a, a proper plan, you know, uh, for them to to revive or uh, innovate the the batik industry. Oh, you mentioned earlier about attracting younger audience. Uh, mm-hmm. How are your responses from your students, and what are some of uh, the opportunities that we have to Oh, in order to attract them, how can we get okay. these younger generations more involved? All right. So, from my observation, uh, like like the example from my students, uh, they are more towards something that is contemporary kind of style. Yeah. Um, they are the generation of uh, uh, they love uh something. Out of the box, they don't like they don't like much more on the traditional things. Yeah. Uh, even they themselves are confused. Uh, the real batik yeah. compared to the digital kind of textile, and sometimes the digital kind they thought is batik. 
yeah, the, the true meaning of batik is uh, using uh, wax or resist in the process of making it. So the digital uh, could be inspired by batik motif, but it's not a real batik. Yeah. So that is uh, one of the challenges we need to uh, constantly remind them, okay, what is the real or true meaning of batik. Yeah, that's what happening in, in, in Malaysia. And uh, in terms of design, yes, they like something contemporary, and then and, uh, to look on the uh, on the uh, market segmentation, the younger generation, uh, yes, uh, they prefer something new, uh, something something that is uh, contemporary as well. Uh, uh, it's not that they don't like the traditional. It's just we can use back the traditional motif, but. Maybe we need to stylize a little bit, you know, in terms of the layout, not not too crowded. You know, sometimes they, they, they want it less crowded design. Yeah. So we have to constantly ask the younger generation, the audience, uh, what do they want uh, in their, in their um, or what do they prefer in, 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 uh, in buying uh, batik. And another thing is, of course, the price itself. Uh, the younger generation, they don't have uh, uh, much uh, uh, pocket money <laughs> to buy uh, all this uh, beautiful batik. So we have to uh, uh, make sure that the, the product that we sell for the younger uh, segmentation, which is uh, not too expensive, not too crowded, those that the elements that they want. And uh, I think the potential maybe uh, there is a lot of potential of, of how to attract them. Um, as you can see uh, nowadays, uh, there is a lot of uh, interesting uh, technologies and social media. Yeah, uh, I think we can start um, collaborating uh, with them. You know, uh, maybe uh, by by wearing our collection or wearing them in, in, in their social media so that from there it can also uh, um, attract the other audience, uh, the, especially the younger one. Um, very much uh, they, they love but it, it's just that uh, we need to constantly update on the design. Yeah. They, they like new stuff. Uh, they don't like all those um, uh, 60s or 70s kind of uh, vibe, you know, we have to uh, go beyond uh, this, the, the, the design uh, elements that we normally do, yeah, so it's a challenge for the young designers as well to, to come up with uh, what's new or what's relevant in, in, in the batik uh, industry. And um, besides collaboration, I think um, uh, another thing that another another way we can attract them is uh, uh, invite them to create their own batik. So this is the best time for them to experiment and explore uh, on on making making batik by themselves. As as you know, all the uh, batik maker at, at the moment we are still in MCO so at most of the batik workshop is closed due to pandemic so I'm also uh, selling some of my batik kit especially the tie and dye that's a, that's a simple way for them to uh, to learn and, and, and to understand on how we do batik uh, normally in, in the industry even though it doesn't use wax, but uh, pretty much um, just an introduction uh, to them, you know, in, in the batik world. So yeah, I think that's one of one of the best, one of the uh, interesting way for them to uh, to explore. Then they can upload it on TikTok or Twitter, you know, showing to uh, sharing their their their, their creative uh, uh, products to others. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so definitely, in uh, design evolves, right? So uh, the motif uh, need to be 
to follow the the generations as well so they have room for exploration and experimentation and yes uh, we have been talking for a while and before we close off our conversation do you have any final thoughts to sum up our conversation today your hopes for the future for uh, your brand or textiles in general okay uh, I do a lot uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, planning and, and, and hoping that uh, the, the industry will uh, especially in, in Malaysia I hope that our batik industry will uh, re- revive or, or um, grow well in the next few years because uh, it's very challenging for us right now and um, I think the best way now is to uh, just uh, continue uh, the process of making mate the, the industry uh, try to sustain uh, by, by doing collaboration yeah, and uh, adapt to the current situation that's the way um, we 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 must uh, stay united, yeah, especially the designers, not just in Malaysia, uh, or I think the whole world. Uh, so that um, when we unite, uh, our our uh, our mind is more focused, uh, and we can you know share our knowledge, and 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 exchange our. Uh, uh, advice or, or learning on the new process and techniques so that uh, it, it will uplift our spirits yeah to, to create more beautiful and unique artworks so um, I hope that um, the local and international industry can work together in the future or and, and myself uh, I would love to share uh, my batik collection uh, and also my friends collection to other parts of the world, maybe we can start with your gallery, yeah, that gallery. So um, I'm hoping to to bring uh, our local content to the international uh, audience. Yeah, from there maybe because uh, uh, all this uh, sharing session it is important because we need we we have to constantly um, keep. Uh, the the industry alive uh, by doing this so that you will inspire others and um, and the new generation will, will uh, continue the legacy uh, of, of batik uh, design in the future so yep that's my hope and and uh, I wish everyone uh, uh, the best in their future all right. Yes. Thank you so much, Hafiz. Uh, really appropriate is a matter of, well, at this moment, surviving the pandemic, but also in a greater scheme of things is to promote uh, collaboration and discussion, not just within the community, but with like the greater uh, designers or uh, practitioners uh, everywhere to create a a more cohesive narrative as well as a community strength in our designs and promotion of traditional textiles. Sure. And yeah, thank you so much once again for dropping by today. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you like this chat, do check out our previous interview with other guests over on our IGTV or read it all on our website www.anergallery.com. If you like to own a piece of textile, batik or tenon woven cloth, do check out our web store at www.nrstorebatik.com. Finally, do follow us on social media at NR Gallery and at NR Store on Facebook and Instagram to find out more about our future events and latest happenings. And until next time, stay safe and take care.